Good afternoon everyone and welcome to this workshop. Um, I asked the question in the group what did you want me to cover and the first, an uh, first answer was why am I still angry at my ex? So that is what we are going to cover today. Now first off before we get started I I'm doing these at four o'clock because it's in all honesty, it suits me better to do it at these times. I appreciate you might not be able to watch this live, but you'll still be able to watch it. Sorry, that's my dog being in pain. Um, you'll still be able to watch it live and get exactly the same experience. So it really doesn't matter whether it's live or on the replay, but this is the best time for me to do it if it's in about around other commitments. Um, so obviously, if you can be here, great. If not, don't worry, it's not a problem. Um, so like I said, today we are covering why am I still angry at my ex? First off, you know, there's two types of anger as far as I, I'm concerned. The first one is fuel, fuel to create change. But the second one is Anger is depression turned inward. So actually there's a lot of other feelings associated with that anger. Um, and the person that asked the question said, still feeling angry two years later, why? So I want to do an exercise with you and I asked you to bring your post-it notes, which I'm obsessed with stationery, post-it notes, I've got giant post-it notes with all my notes on my little ones because I'm going to do the exercise with you and I want you to do a free friend exercise because I can't tell you why you're still angry those reasons are within you so we're going to look at that okay so what I want you to do is with your post-it notes you can you know you don't have to have multicolored ones you don't have to be as daft as I am and have all of those and um, I just want you to think think about the anger let it come up and then start to think about what are those reasons? Is it a particular scenario? Is it, is it just their face? <laughs> is it their, a smug look? You know, there'll be lots of different things and I want you to just get them out onto post-it notes. I'm gonna use my, wall, my um, doors behind me and just stick them on. So I'm gonna give us about three minutes past so give us only about five minutes to do this i don't want us to linger in the anger too long but i think it's worthwhile if we're going to cover anger we kind of need to get it out and deal with it so get going you've got about five minutes so write down why are you still angry what is going on are you is it anger is it frustration is it sadness is it guilt is it ashamed? Is it um, lots of other emotions? There's, there's a great uh, graphic about anger, which is it's an iceberg. So anger is the top bit, but actually the emotions that lie under it. And that's what we want to get into today. What are the emotions underneath? So I'm going to do the same and I'll say mine out loud, not to distract you. Um, but just to try and help if it's something that you're struggling with. So I'm just gonna have a think about something that makes me angry, get into that. So if you need to do the same, just get into that feeling, remember what, what that feels like, and then just start letting things flow naturally. Don't censor it, just write whatever. I'm not gonna look at it. I'm sharing mine, but you don't have to share yours, okay? So it really doesn't matter what you write down, okay? So let me just get into my thing that makes me angry. Okay, okay. So I'm not gonna tell you what makes me angry, but <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tell you what makes me angry. I get angry when, and this is an immediate reaction, I can talk myself out of it, but I get angry when people play the victim. Um, it's all woe is me. 
I understand that there's lots of horrible things. I get that. But I've just, and this is because I've just tried to have a conversation with someone in a completely different group. I'm trying to offer them some hope. And they didn't want it. And that's okay. They weren't in that place. That's absolutely fine. But I could feel my own... I'm just getting annoyed and frustrated, so I'm going to write down annoyed and frustrated. I'm going to think about that. So that was mine. I'm not going to go into the all of it as, I, as I'm going to allow myself to free write. But you think about something that makes you angry or the whole anger. Let the anger come and really free free write. Write whatever comes up on your post. And like I say, we're not going to see it. So I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to write down. Frustrated. Annoyed. And this is an interesting one actually. This is probably at the core of it. Helpless. <laughs> I felt really helpless that I couldn't do anything and that's the rescuer in me. And these are things that we can work on. Okay. What else? attacked because when I offered my advice this person just wasn't in a place to hear it and I said that's fine but he came back quite aggressively like he, he didn't he couldn't hear what I was saying and I don't mean hear it as in volume I mean he wasn't in the right place to hear what I was saying I take some of the responsibility for that and I did um but he came back very short, was in when I offered hope, it was almost like, what are you talking about? Why are you offering me hope? That kind of response. So I felt a little bit attacked in that. So I put, I put that up there. Um, what else did I feel? Okay, I put pity. I felt pity for him that he was stuck. Um, but actually also on that, I felt a bit guilty. Because I kind of expected him to be somewhere that he wasn't and um, maybe pushed him further than he was ready to, so there was an element of guilt within that at the time. Okay, just a couple more minutes on this. Okay, I've put triggered. So what he was talking about was something that um, happened in uh, my past, my relationship. And I think my need to kind of fix it for him was because I couldn't fix it in mine. So I felt quite triggered by him not accepting my help. And again, rescuer, absolutely. Thankfully, I, I did step away is only a couple of responses but good to see the rescue is still there um irony um so yeah triggered the of that memory um which then i didn't like so I've, we're gonna put uncomfortable as well I'm going to do two more just so I can uh, use the orange ones as well, because I'm fair. Um, what else was I feeling? Hmm. 
Okay, I don't really know what word to put down, but essentially what I felt was I wanted to say to him, well, if you think that, then why are you fighting? But I'm struggling to think of how I can word that. So my anger was... You say on the one hand you're fighting, but on the other hand, you've convinced yourself that you're not going to win. Confused. Confused. I felt confused. Okay, I'm going to leave it there because then we've got a nine. I've got nine. Okay, so if you want to share any of yours, you can do, but you can see that when you say, why am I still angry, that actually anger is this umbrella and there's a lot more emotions going on underneath it. So, and these are the parts that you can heal. You can heal these bits. We've, like I said, I re recognise my rescuer jumped in. That's something I can work on. You know, that's, that's powerful. I can do that. So these are areas for you to, to take your post-it notes and just use them if you're seeking, seeing a therapist bring them to your therapy show them and talk through these things why I, i've noticed that i feel this i feel angry or i feel confused or i feel shame whatever came up for you these are areas for you to work on that will help to reduce that anger so i want to just offer you two questions that you can think about with your anger if it's if you're finding it really hard to let go, two questions. So the first one is, how expensive is it for you to hold on to the anger? So when it comes up, just ask yourself that. What are you missing out on? What is it doing to your body? What is it, is it doing to your time? What is it doing to your relationships around you? How damaging is this anger? Just put it in some context. And then, would now be a good time to let that go? Hopefully the answer is yes. So, first thing I want to do is, this is an exercise in uh, the Get Caught Ready programme because understandably there's a lot of anger in, as part of that process. And so, oh, I try to help people manage that. So we're gonna do that exercise here. So, anger, like I said, Anger is an emotion, and as far as I'm concerned, there's no such thing as a bad or a good emotion. It's what we do with it and how we interpret it. And we can be led to be fearful of anger, either from childhood, this is something that we, we still feel, because maybe we grew up in an environment where either there was hardly any expression or there was explosive expression. So anger has this bigger meaning than just being an emotion. What I want to do is I want to bring it back to just being a feeling and a sensation, a physical sensation. So this exercise is all about helping you to manage it, not labelling it as bad or good, just helping you to manage it. OK, so I want you to bring that anger back. To start to feel that anger, you know, picture your ex in front of you or picture a scenario that's particularly made you angry, whichever it is. We're not going to stay here very long, so don't worry. You're not going to be bashing your fists on the floor or anything. So just start to feel that. And what I want you to do is notice where in your body is this sensation? Is it clenched fists? Is it clenched jaw? Do your cheeks go flush? Do you, do you, I, like my neck, I just tense. My whole muscles can tense. And then I end up with a real bad pain between my shoulder blades. Um, your heart might start to beat faster. What is happening in your body when you start to feel these emotions? What you'll find is that simple act of just recognising it as a physical sensation is enough to lower it. You take the power out straight away. So... You've already managed to gain control because you've noticed it. You've acknowledged it. What I want you to do next is, can we relabel them? Because flushed cheeks can mean excitement, like, ooh, I fancy them, or, you know, it can mean a lot of things. It can mean you've just exercised, flushed cheeks, can mean anything you want it to do so can you relabel can you put it as something else racing heart again 
pure excitement, pure adrenaline. Could it be good? Could it be that something amazing is going to happen? Because we do. When you've been around a narcissist, your emotions get totally mislabeled because they project onto you. You might have been feeling excited, but they told you you felt angry. And if you've grown up in an environment like that where you weren't allowed to express your emotions, again, they'd have been mislabeled. So now's your time. Reframe it. Reframe what that feeling could be. That knot in your stomach could be butterflies. Again, it could be excitement. It could be anything you want it to be. You have control now because you know what the sensation is. Another thing you could do is think about how can I express this in a healthy way? Now that it's under control, now that it's not explosive, I don't want to just bottle it up. How can I say this in a way that is heard and that is acknowledging that I have these feelings? So that's another thing for you to think about. Is how can you safely and healthily express exactly what you are feeling? Like these feelings, you know, how can you express them in a way that takes ownership but is communicating it? So what I want to do now, I'm aware we're racing through this, but that's okay. You're getting a lot of value out of this. I hope you're getting a lot of value out of it. I say if you watch it on the replay, um, you'll still get the same. You can still do this exercise in your own time. Um, I'm going to do a healing exercise with you now. So I want you to, if you can, just sit somewhere really quiet and comfortable and close your eyes. And I'm just going to get my books. Be nice and relaxed. Just be open-minded. Okay, so I want you to place your hand on the part of the body where you noticed that anger residing. So it could have been, like I say, your heart beating faster, so place your hand on your heart. It could be your cheeks, could have been your neck. Just place your hand wherever you felt that emotion most intensely. And just breathe through it, allowing any emotion to rise to the surface without any resistance. You're not fighting it, you're allowing the sensation to come. Then relax your hand and say, either in your head or out loud, it's up to you, divine healing intelligence. Pour the orange red flame of purification into every aspect of my being that is holding on to anger, hatred, hurt, and thoughts of revenge. Please dissolve all feelings of fear, numbness, rage, and judgment. Allow me to find new healing ways to express and let go of anger. Help me to realise anger is not who I am. It is an emotion I have bought into and have been afraid to release. But now I am better for some, I'm ready for something better, something softer and healthier. I am willing to transform anger into peace. Thank you. Now keep repeating the word clear until you feel lighter. You might want to tap at your heart. Just clear, clear, until you can feel the lightness. Okay, I want to do another quick exercise with you to help you to gain control over the anger and hopefully diminish that anger towards them, put you in control of your relationship with them. So again, I want you to sit quietly, but I want you to roll your eyes up into your head as if you're trying to look at your eyebrows. I want you to hold them there and take 
three, breath in and out. So one, two, keep your eyes up there. You might start flickering, but that's okay. Um, on the third breath, as you begin to exhale, drop your eyelids down and let your eyes return to their natural position. Now I want you to imagine that you're looking out over a balcony. So tilt your head down, your chin down towards your chest. We're looking out over this balcony. And in front of you, there's 10 steps. And you can see your feet at the top of these steps. And you're gonna feel yourself begin to walk down them. And with each step, you're gonna feel more and more relaxed as you go down the steps. We start at step 10 and we're going down deeper and deeper into step nine. In step eight, you can see your feet, you can feel your feet. Step seven, six, five, feeling deeper and more relaxed. Step four, Three, two, feeling very, very relaxed now. Two, and one. You're feeling incredibly relaxed. You're not asleep, you can still hear me, but I want to show you how suggestible you are to what I'm about to show you and give you so you have the power back. So I want you to start by imagining that you're holding on to bicycle handlebars. So you've got both hands out in front of you at a slight angle. And in your left hand, I want you to imagine that you've got a bucket full of wet sand. And you can feel how heavy that is. Do you feel it in your fingers? Do you feel it in your wrist? In your arm? As it's going down? really weighing, it's very heavy, but in your right hand, attached to your wrist, is a helium balloon, and that helium balloon is pulling up, it's pulling your wrist up, and it's so light, it's gently raising your hand, and it keeps going higher as the helium raises up and up and up. I want you to just prove how strong this is. I want you to try and push down against that helium balloon. Really try and push and actually what you find is that it's like pushing against a beach ball. It just bounces back up. You can't get it down. And now with your left hand, I want you to try and pick up that bucket of sand. You pick it up and you can't. It's so heavy. Okay, and now I want you to just relax and drop your hands back down, either on your lap or next to you. That has shown how powerful your mind is at suggestion. So now we're going to do something to give you the power back against your ex. So I want you to imagine your ex is stood in front of you. Just imagine them stood there. You're observing. You're not involved. You're not going to get into a conversation with them. You're literally just watching them. And I want you to think about the, their voice, particularly their tone, their pitch and their volume. So do they speak very softly or are they quite harsh with their words? Is it very short? I want you to think and hear. It doesn't matter if it's not actually how they speak. This is about how you are imagining them. So are they soft? or are they harsh? Is it short or is it longer? Do they speak slowly and softly or short and angry? I also want you to think about the volume. Are they very loud or do they speak very quietly? This is all what you're imagining right in front of you right now. And I want you to think about their body. Are they quite big and menacing? 
do they take up a lot of room are they tall or are they quite short again doesn't have to be based on their real shape and size this is how you're imagining them because when i imagine people who i feel have control over me i often imagine them very big and very tall and me very small and that's psychological that i feel small and inferior so it's this is totally about how you imagine them so just rem just think are they big are they tall are they small are they tiny whatever is coming up for you and that tone of their voice that pitch in their voice and the volume so now i want us to take control okay so i want you to again with their voice i want you to start playing so i want you to if they've got quite a deep voice i want you to turn that pitch up because they've got a really squeaky voice and play with it you can go it's entirely to you just play around you've got control you know you you're wiggling the dials you can do that with their volume you can turn it right up or you can turn it right down it's entirely up to you just get it just play just mess make yourself giggle as you're doing it you've got complete control over them at this point so just keep doing that and maybe get to a point where you feel comfortable that they it doesn't mean anything you know no matter what words they say you can turn it up and actually you can turn it straight right down again. You don't have to listen. You've got the control of the volume now. What I then want you to do is imagine their body again. And I want you to think about putting your forefinger on their head in your imagination and your thumb under their feet. So you can imagine, you know, they might be big but they're over there. You're putting that. And now I want you to start to squash them. Squish them right down. If you've still got the volume up, you might be able to hear their voice getting starting to get really squeaky as they get smaller and smaller. And it's up to you whether you keep them really small or whether you squish them completely. It's totally your choice. But you can do that whenever you want to. You have full control over this image. So whenever they come up in your thoughts, you can do that. And even when you see them in person, in your head, you can remember. I can squish you, I can turn the volume up here, I can make your voice go all squeaky. You have that power over them. You have that power over your own mind to be able to do that. So I want you to feel these feelings, these feelings of not being scared of them anymore, not being angry at all. How can you be angry at this tiny little person with a really squeaky little voice? You're not angry at that person. There's no anger there whatsoever. In fact, no, they're nothing. They're insignificant. They have no control. They mean nothing. They're tiny. They are virtually nothing anymore. And feel that. Really feel that inside you. Feel that control and that power that you now have over your own thoughts and feelings about this person. And now I want you to make your way to the bottom of that 10 step stairway. And we're going to go back up. But with each step, you're going to feel more and more in control, more and more powerful with every step that you take up. So we're going to start at the first step. Step one, two, three. This feeling of power and happiness and, and pure control. They are, they are insignificant. They have no control over you anymore. You have full control over what you hear, what you see. It's all in your power. Step four, five six and it's really bursting out of you you literally want to run up the top of these steps because you're so excited by this feeling so let's run up these steps so seven eight nine ten and you're at the top and i want you to carry those feelings forward into everyday life you can do this with anyone you can imagine them however you want you can just squish them in your mind's eye you can turn down their volume you can make them all squeaky you have that power and that control within you to so take that forward and that will help you to deal with your anger one final thing i'm going to give you because i'm overly generous is a quick affirmation for you to say um obviously you can rewind and i'll say it slow so if you want to take notes you can or you can watch it on the rewind and um, on the replay sorry but just say this to help with getting rid of that anger any lasting remnants that you might have you shouldn't have after doing that but 
Now, this is a really positive affirmation for you. So, dear universe, I trust that the lesson with this experience is being revealed in perfect divine timing. May I now release any feelings of anger, negativity and heaviness so that I may be brought back to a state of peace, of presence and of joy. So be it. So it is. And there you go. That's how we deal with anger. <laughs> So I hope you found that really helpful. Um, I don't know whether it's what you're expecting, but I really believe in the power of you and in the power of your mind. And you have full control over this. So you have your post-it notes that you can take to therapy or work through journaling or however you want to work through them. You have them. You know exactly what's going on under the surface. You can deal with those emotions much more powerfully. You have a powerful healing that you use that orange energy that you can surround yourself with you have an affirmation that you can use and you now have your squishing and volume control that you can go to anytime you want you have this feeling of power and control over yourself and your emotions anger doesn't stand a chance but remember anger as, it, as itself is not a bad emotion do not fall out with anger it is an expression and a sensation Get in touch with it, allow it to flow and feel it and discover it and take back control of it. I hope you found that helpful. I'd love to hear your feedback. Next workshop will be next week, same time, um, about why you can't stop thinking about your ex. And it will follow a similar sort of format, but with different exercises. So there you go. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.